Welcome to Tip TV Finance, where we're joined by Scott Grant, who is a director at London South East. How are you today, Scott? I'm good, Zach. Ready to break the internet with you as always. Right. You're recovering from seeing me on Saturday at Master Investor? Uh, just, just about, take yeah. A few, take, um, a bit, take a bit longer, won't it? But, uh. <laughs> no, it's a, a cracking event. Uh, thanks to the guys at Master Investor. It's the second year we've been heavily involved. We're one of the key headline sponsors. Um, we had a great session with Evil Knievel. Uh, doff my cap to my colleague Phil, who hosted the Rising Star stage all day and had people on there like Etoro and uh, Amanda from Peterhouse Capital. Uh, and also our technical seminar with Raj and Dahl talking about level two and volume data. But the event itself was just fantastic, uh, a great day. Everyone had a big smile on their face, about 4,000 private investors, I believe. So uh, roll on next year. Yeah, so I mean, the Rising Stars area was uh, was packed, actually. It was, uh, I thought there was some pop star there or something like that. It was that uh, that uh, well attended. Uh, as far as the reality of the markets are concerned, uh, what's going on at the moment? Yeah, I was going to just uh, uh, crack on with three things today. Our most traded on lse.co.uk, uh, most discussed, and a uh, FTSE 100 riser for you. Um, in terms of most traded, it's sort of a bit of a left field play, really. Um, I noticed a company called Infinity Energy. Uh, their market identifier is INFT. Um, on March the 15th, just a huge volume spike uh, and, and a price rocket. Um, that led to the next morning, or I think later that afternoon, there was an R. R from their board, uh, basically shrugging their shoulders. Um, you know, why this price rise, why this volume rise, but we don't know. Um, I had a little dig around yesterday evening, tried to find, uh, see if they had a website or anything like that. Uh, couldn't really find much. Uh, they seem to be an investment company in the commodities market. Um, I think it's a classic case of uh, uh, do your own research. The SP seems quite volatile, um, but yeah, so a little bit left field, but the most traded last week uh, via lse.co.uk. Okay, so we'll uh, keep watching that one. Um, other things to look at? Yeah, no great surprise yesterday. Um, the second most chatted about share, and I think eighth on the week, is Hurricane Energy. Uh, their market identifier, HUR. Um, they issued a, a really good RNS for, for an investor yesterday, which said their Halifax well uh, and the Lancaster field are actually one large connected structure, which was uh, their hope. Um, I'm going to read directly from the RNS. It's now the largest undeveloped discovery uh, on the UK continental shelf. So, no great surprise also that the share price rose by about 10% yesterday. Um, I remember a few months ago, Malcolm Graham Wood, or Malky as he's known, uh, actually targeted uh, Hurricane uh, 100 pence or a pound, therefore, and so he's looking uh, quite good now. I think the share finished almost up towards 60p yesterday. As I said, very, very nice RNS for everyone involved, uh, as long as they can actually uh, uh, bring some stuff to the surface eventually. So, uh, so no great surprise. That was uh, quite well discussed yesterday on our chat boards. Right. Okay. And uh, any more offerings? Uh, yeah, just just quickly, uh, FTSE 100 riser yesterday, so this is a market close on the 27th, was next, uh, market identifier NXT, uh, they were up by 2.47% uh, to £42.32. pence. Um, on the 24th of March, UBS actually uh, reiterated their buy with a target of £49, so as you can see there's about £7 worth of, of hopeful upside there. Um, they re released results on the 23rd, I think Lord Wolfson, who's uh, a I can't remember if he's actually chairman of Next. He admitted a few mistakes, but actually broadly, if you read uh, along the results uh, between their catalogue and their retail, uh, the sales were broadly flat. So what came across as a bit of gloom and doom actually probably wasn't so bad in reality. Hence that yesterday, as I said, they were the top riser in the FTSE 100. So it would appear that the market's factored in the, uh, the worst or maybe over factored in the worst uh, at Next, uh, for at least for the near term. It seems that way. It seems that way. At least they're uh, big enough and, and ugly enough to admit, yes, we perhaps uh, ran in some lines too quick into shops and seem to, as I said, have a degree of honesty there. And as you said, I think it was a little bit doom and gloom last week. It's been a way to see him as the FTSE 100 highest rise yesterday. Uh, well, in some ways, for me, it was no great surprise that, that you'd see that kind of rebound when the results, uh, you know, seeped in and people realised well, actually isn't isn't as bad as perhaps uh, perhaps was first thought. Uh, quick finish one off for you. Uh, we've got share views. 
Uh, we've got Michael Masterman uh, on our TV show. He's currently online. Uh, he's the CEO of W Resources. Uh, he's talking about tungsten, copper, and uh, gold. Um, uh, hopefully, his uh, views will get through. So I believe the company hit a 52-week low uh, share price-wise on the 16th of March. Uh, and this week, uh, we've got Ian Williams talking about opportunities in silver and the fund he runs. That share views our uh, TV show uh, available on our YouTube channel. Excellent. Scott Grant, Director at uh, London South East, thanks for speaking with us and joining us today. Thanks, Zach.